Okay, welcome back, Kickerun fans, to another day of the Christmas tournament, 2012 Christmas tournament cast. And right now, we're going to be watching J Raccoon versus Shaka. And last match, we watched Vermind versus Haiku. Vermind winning quite convincingly against Haiku, although in a very odd, bizarre, not at all metagame representative game. I will be fighting Ferreter, but I have to show J Raccoon versus Shaka because the bracket image just got a bit messed up. So, let's get to it. Well, once again, we are on Tomb of Heroes. J Raccoon at the east side of the map and Shaka at the west side of the map. J Raccoon still pausing to get himself started up. Shaka going very quickly for CISO. I'm pretty sure both players are actually playing random. J Raccoon getting himself Vekir. Not sure why players are playing random. I really don't. I'm really starting to suspect that the Acorn community is not that competitive. But, I digress. J Raccoon building up an economy. Or building a f more of an economic start, getting his first RPs going. On a map like Tomb of Heroes, this is not a bad idea. Shaka, on the other hand, going for two very fast importers, and I don't know why. Is he, is he going for a proxy strategy, a proxy factory, or armory? Maybe. That's the only thing that comes to mind. Because two importers like this is kind of risky. Especially two importers and two RPs. Two importers and one RP might work for a very quick ATHC proxy, but two importers and two RPs that. That might work too, actually. On a map this size, that would probably be able to get resources in time for that to work. But no, he's very quickly getting special ops, very quickly going for infantry, I... And very quickly scouting out, getting expansions, I... I am confused by what he is doing. And J-Raccoon, in their hand, going up to the north, not so confused. Going from the north, not a bad idea. Getting his Zionvir up there, just to scout it out, possibly secure it. That's a really good expansion if your opponent doesn't realize that you've taken it, if they don't see you through the comm hub, that you've taken that expansion. It's really useful to have. And anyway, Shalka, one of his scouting forces is being destroyed by Teth Beer and Shin Beer from J Raccoon, and his expansion attempts. I mean, that was was that his marine? Yes, it was his marine. So I won't be able to proxy build. His special ops is the only one going towards only one going towards J Raccoon's base. So Shalka right now has an expansion being built up right near his main base, just spreading out his RPs thin. A little bit surprised he's doing that. Well, J Raccoon is. He sent a Zion Beard north, so it will be able to build up when it gets to it. Get another. Got another Zion Beard in his main base, too, just to make sure enough to have suspicion. Nice idea there. J Raccoon getting a depot at a pretty reasonable time for a map like Tomb of Heroes. Whereas Shaka. Ah, he's moving his Marine up forward, and looks like his Marine is gonna be just standing around here, building up Proxy Factory, building up possibly Proxy Importers, but definitely Proxy Factories. With some infantry as main base to defend. Well, hmm. Okay, I guess I'm gonna sort of see how this works, because the scouting forces. I mean, granted, J Raccoon did see the scouting marine, but he doesn't know about. Like, he expects three starting forces. And Shalka, right now, has a marine, a special ops, and J Raccoon saw that he killed a marine. So, from J Raccoon's point of view, he might just assume that this is everything, that Shalka has those three starting infantry, and he just says whatever he has in his main base. He hasn't scattered it out at all. So, not a bad psychological tactic, if that was Shaka, if that is what Shaka was going for, but it looks like Shaka is not actually going for a proxy strategy, and is in fact revealing the fact that he has extra infantry, and then he built his infantry. That, that is a waste of good information hiding. That's kind of sad to see, actually, because that, as a proxy basis, J Raccoon wouldn't have suspected anything. Now, as far as J Raccoon knew, Shaka had just a starting infantry, and whatever he was building his main base, probably ATHCs or whatever, but now Shalka has made it very clear that no, he does in fact have extra infantry. It was building extra infantry, and that's what he's investing in. As opposed to building a proxy factory and making it impossible for Jericho to realize that there's a proxy factory coming up, or very difficult for him to realize. He, it would have been a very long shot guess. So it looks like Shalka is in fact committed to going heavy for infantry. Getting another importer hiding around the side. I don't know why he's going heavy for infantry. This is the second game. Haiku also did this, going heavy for infantry. And I don't understand why. I mean, maybe players are trying to figure out if infantry works well, but a tournament is not the time. Especially not in the loser's bracket. If you're in the winner's bracket, maybe, because at that point you still have another match you can play through that in case you lose the first one. But at this point, whoever loses this match is eliminated from the tournament. So experimentation like this is extremely dangerous and not at all recommended. This is the experimentation you do in practice games, not in tournament games. 
in tournament games, in tournament games, it's suicide. Like, in tournament games, you stick to safe strategies. Unless you're in a game, like, you're, you've are you won game one, you're in game two with a best of three, or you're in the winner's bracket, and you're pretty confident to be able to get up in case you lose. Even then, it's still a gamble that you shouldn't take, but it might just work if you don't think a standard strategy will win against a particular player. But, I don't know what Shaka, why Shaka would think that against Ferreter, and honestly, I think it's just that he's he might be trying to experiment, not realizing that you don't experiment in tournaments. You never experiment in tournaments. This is a very bad idea and a very easy way to lose. We'll see if he does lose, but Jericho is going for a much safer strategy. Design Beard of the North, that's fine. That's just a safe proxy expansion that that's hidden. I mean, Shalka doesn't seem to suspect it at all and does not have the tools to find it out very easily. The infantry here aren't going to be very useful. Lancers would find it, and ATHCs would find it, but he won't be able to find it with just infantry. That will not happen. So, I mean, all this infantry coming in, they're going to get torn apart by Zion Pulsers, especially coming in so out of sync the way they are. And especially with the... Oh, nice. The Tethvir and Shinvir moving back to help defend as well, not getting themselves killed in the scouting attack. So, Jericho is everything he needs for defense. Getting, as well, getting a foundation with an AC, for an ACC up pretty soon, or at the very least for healing. I mean, this is not going down quickly. Along with that, he has... I mean, the starting infantry defense forces, yeah, he's he's good. Jerrikin's in a very solid position. Zion Pulsar up now, getting rid of everything else, and once the next wave of infantry comes in, the Zion Pulsar will just take care of them in no time. So, Shalka has nothing for him right now. He has absolutely nothing. I don't know why he didn't go for the proxy strategy and proxy factory. That would have done it. Because that would work. That's actually really dangerous for Vector to deal with. It's extremely hard for them to, to deal with it, but done right. And even if it's done wrong, it's still difficult for them to deal with if you get enough of a proxy factory, get Mars and Twin Mars, and you just run in from the north side here. It's very hard to fight. It's defeatable, but requires very careful timing, very careful precision precision tactics. It's not easy. So j Raccoon right now has a massive, possibly insurmountable advantage that Shalka has basically handed him in a silver platter. Shaka building a proxy armory, however, in the southeast corner of the map, still, I don't see this being enough. A factory. He needs a factory. That's what he definitely needs. He has hardly any RPs. He has just the two in his base, the one in his expansion. He has infantry running around the map, which means he could build RPs around it like a swarm, but he doesn't have the money for it. <coughs> Excuse me. He is getting ground units, likely for the weapon upgrade for Marines. That's the only reason he could use. He doesn't have a macro fab or a factor, so he can't get heavy tanks or mar tanks. I mean, sorry, or twin mars. So, mass infantry maybe with Zion Pulsar counter, that's going to just get rid of it. I mean, like I said, Zion Pulsars counter large groups. And as long as the Zion Pulsars aren't doing anything stupid, which they kind of are, Jericho is going out of position here. But once he sees the attack, he's probably going to go back and just Either, well, he's going for harassment right now, but he's probably going to go back to defend, get rid of all of these infantry, and then just win. There's, like, Shalka really doesn't have anything going for him right now. And here comes the first infantry attack, part of it getting destroyed, largest wave coming in from the west, with a small wave coming from the south. Zion Pulsar not in position to deal with this, this is what I meant. Jericho is out of position right now. A bit surprised he did not build another two Zion Pulsars, he really needs to. Go back, build another couple Zion Pulsars. Seriously, I don't know why he's not doing this. Here come the infantry now, though, and he he's pretty much run out of time to do that. He might be able to teleport this one back, but he needs more. Shalka might... I, don't, I would be surprised if Shalka won from this, but Jericho is building up another Zion Pulsar. Okay, that's good. So he has one more Zion Pulsar, but still, the Zion Pulsar being so out of position is not good. He should teleport that back. Like, right now. That's the order she give, and he's not giving it. I don't know why he's not giving that order. That or build another Zion Pulsar. No, he's trying to build another foundation, surprisingly enough. I mean... I can see saving Chronergy to get the Zion Pulsar around. Now, the Zion Pulsar... Second Zion Pulsar is teleporting back. We do see it going back. That will be able to help out. Which is good. That second healing foundation coming up. And J Raccoon... Losing the one Zion Pulsar, the second Zion Pulsar coming in might be able to help out, but this is still going to be very difficult for Jericho to deal with. Like I said, he didn't build Zion Pulsars enough in time. But building two more out of the depot, they, those should be enough to help out. And the second Zion Pulsar 
being able to be healed up enough, the Zion Veer will be able to finish off the Marine, and the Foundation being built up just in time. With more Zion Pulsars coming in to finish off the Infantry Assault, there are still more coming in, but if he pushes out from here, Jericho should be able to get out of this. Still, he did kind of allow this to happen. He did not build Zion Pulsars in time enough, and that is still going to be a bit difficult for him to deal with. However, now that he has enough to deal with pretty much any crowd of infantry, he should be fine. Should move on, try to get some area in his maybe. Not really harass and raid. He needs it as base. Why is he going out to harass and raid? But if he has an ACC, he should be able to build up from there. There, getting an aerial control center. Should be able to build up Zion or Shin Turtress from there, which will be able to get rid of these units as well, quite handily. And however, losing his expansion his expansion to the north is the main thing carrying him through. That's the main reason he has any chance of getting through this game, is because his main base has been pretty heavily damaged, but his expansion to the north is keeping him still ahead of Shalka. Quite a lot ahead of Shalka, actually. Still, Shalka focusing only on reserves and... Basically, focusing entirely on infantry means that he only has to focus on reserves and LC. Another wave of infantry coming in, which won't be fought off in time, with the Marine coming down in the south heralding his arrival, J-Raccoon not moving to the right position to harass. I don't know if he's paying attention to this or not. He has hardly any current energy left, but he's moving back to defend, which is the best thing he could do. Getting rid of one of the Marines. Pulling a Shinveer back. This will allow for a very fast Shin Turcher, and that will give him the defense he needs, as well as the force projection he needs. And here are Shalka's forces coming in. Jericho in position to defend against them, getting rid of them without any issue. And here comes that no, why is the Shinbeer not turning into a Shin Turcher? Ah, no Chrono Energy, that's why. Okay, now I'm wondering why he's doing that, because at this point, that Shinbeer needs to become a Shin Turcher. He's clearly moving up. Not sure if Shalka is not building any proxy buildings. He may be planning to, but he is finally building a factory. Nine minutes in the game, or ten, almost ten minutes in the game, finally building a factory. This imagery strategy is clearly no longer working, and I just wonder where that Shin Turcher is. The Shinbeer should be a Shin Turcher by now. I do not know why it has not done so. However, now that now that Jericho has all these Zion Pulses, he can at least project some force around the map, get rid of some of the expansions that Shalka had, and probably get rid of his main base, no problem. ATHCs won't be much of a match for it, so Jericho just needs to push forward to win. And turn this into a Shin Turcher. I don't know why he's not doing that. He can afford it. He just isn't. And it looks like we have... Oh, let's see, the Zion Pulse is coming in. That's the north base, that's getting rid of that. That is moving into the main base, so it should be fine to get rid of that. And J-Raccoon will be able to block off everything coming in from the south. Does have the units there. He does have... This RP is pretty much gone. I mean, it's closing up and moving away. Shaka doing not badly for defending his RPs, but still not enough. What, he, what Jericho needs to do, however, is get rid of this armory. If he gets rid of that armory, that's one fewer armory providing units to attack him with. That's one fewer front to worry about. But it doesn't look like he's doing that. He may suspect it's here and not over in the southeast corner. I don't know if there's still a thinking in Akron community that people only build around resource crates. One of the reasons for this map being constructed the way it is, is to try to get people out of that thinking. That people can build anywhere. It doesn't have to be near resource crates. It can be anywhere because near resource crates only is kind of shallow. It's kind of a shallow gameplay setup. So I wanted to avoid that. However, Jericho not really building up much at all. He might be saving for gate tech. That's the only thing I can think of right now. Shalka, on the other hand, having hardly any resources, building up ATHCs now, and trying to build up RPs at Jericho's natural expansion, but it's not working. And also trying to attack heavily, which like I said, should be a Shin Turcher here to deal with that. But there isn't. And here are the ATHCs, mech coming up. So Shalka trying to build a bit of an army, but this is still way too late. I mean, it's still far too low in tech to deal with what's going on now. J Raccoon, like I said, pretty much has the luxury of building up two gate tech if he wants to. Though I still think he should be. No, he's attacking, never mind. I was about to say, I still think he should be attacking with this, and he is. That's exactly what he's doing. Finishing off what Shalka has, and he's not finding it! He is not finding it, but he might be able to find it, might be figuring it out now that it's not near this expansion. That the armory is just off in the corner. But getting rid of this factory is going to be pretty big. Shalka having no other factories on the map as far as I can... No, he doesn't have any other factories on the map, only armories. 
And the ATC is going down quite quickly too. Well, one of them going down, the other one managing to stay alive as the Zion Pulsar is chased off. But that is a small expeditionary force. Jericho can afford to lose those. Building more Zion Pulsars, still not sure why he's not building a Shin Turcher, but building more Zion Pulsars to deal with all this. Not getting these in a position to deal with the expansion attempt. And a RP for Shalka just in the middle of nowhere, closed off, doing nothing. Shalka not worried about that, neither is Jericho from the looks of it. Jericho and Zion Pulsars going straight past that. And not finding this importer. That's that must be painful. But still, J Raccoon in a good position. Shalka, however, expanding to the north, completely hidden too. And J Raccoon building up Zion Turchers. No Shin Turchers though, really should be. But building up Zion Turchers. And Zion Pulsar getting rid of one of the ATCs, but ending up beaten by the second ATC. Has to run away. Not sure why it's not getting support, but these Zion Pulsars coming in here should be able to finish off the rest of Shalka's main base. But still, Jericho is not building too much. He is floating resources very heavily, and I don't understand why this is the case. At any rate, ATCs down here are being completely destroyed by Zion Pulsars. A mech coming around here, which looks like it's trying to build a macro fab. There is still a small amount of QP income for Shaka coming down from... No, there isn't! Except here. Sorry, there is in the north. That's right. There is a bit of QP income in the north. That's the only way you could build a macro fab and support it, but... At this point, I don't really see that happening in the long term. J Raccoon, why is he not attacking Shalka's main base? Is he attacking at the edge? This is this is when he should be attacking it, at the unplayable, at the unplayable past edge. But there does not appear to be any queued orders to that effect. So I do not understand what he is doing. He is attacking from the south, which will help. And here we go. So there is an attack coming in from the south, but that will not end up in the unplayable past by the time Shalka sees it. However, it will end up obliterating this RP, getting rid of part of Shalka's QP income. So Shalka can still build a macro fab from this mech, but he... Wow, that was a lot of infantry, by the way. But he can't easily build other units from it. Having lost that QP RP down here, he is going to have to worry about getting rid of... Well, he's going to have to worry about getting rid of these Zion Pulsars before they destroy too much more, and that's not likely to happen. Really, Jericoon right now not producing, which is kind of worrisome, but that's the only thing problematic. Right now, Jericoon just setting himself up, getting an Assault Force into... getting Assault Force into Shalka's base while keeping some defenses in his own base in case of a massive infantry attack, like the one that's happening right now. And... once again, he does need to get a Shin Turcher. Like, getting the Shin Beer into a Shin Turcher would help a massive amount. But even without that... getting rid of his infantry without... With some issue, Zion Pulsar, however, being healed up enough that it does not matter. This infantry horde is going down without much of a fight. They are doing what they can, but there's too much healing going on. Not much they can do, and Shalka has pretty much lost the game. Jericho can just march into his main base, tear him to shreds, and these side bases are not a big concern. Even I just a Zion Pulsar and a Zion Church can hold off pretty much anything coming from the side bases. This Lancer is a bit of a threat. That is to be sure. That might be a problem, but even then, the Zion Turcher can just deal with it without much issue. So yeah, even the Lancer isn't going to do too much. And here comes this main assault, J. Raccoon's massive assault, completely obliterating Shalka's base, and that is... This is game. I know Shalka has some buildings around the map, and he has his infantry horde that's coming in, trying to do what he can, but this is game. J. Raccoon just... Clearing up Shalka's entire base, getting rid of two of his importers, only one left, which means only three infantry from that before it's out and needs to recharge. There is nothing going for him right now. He has... he's lost. Shalka has lost this game and is out of the tournament. This Lancer alone is not doing enough. It only really works against like one or two Zion Bolsters, and even then you need a couple Lancers, possibly with ATHC support to help out on the ground. So there is, there is nothing Shaka can do from here. And like I said, I do not know why he went mass infantry. I think he was experimenting. That's the only thing that comes to mind. And like I said, experimentation is bad in a tournament. And hey, the first area units, Test Turchers, not Shin Turchers, surprisingly enough. Really surprisingly, because there's only been the one or the two Lancers now. But this Lancer is going down from the Zion Beers. Focus on the Zion Pulse is way too much. Zion Beers now. I mean, Jericho just set up shop here now is 
<laughs> RPs. So, at this point, there isn't much to go for it. One marine over here, that's about all Shalka has, and this expansion to the north, and this stuff to the southeast. Jericoon just needs to scout around and find it. Why is he not doing so? He is doing so. Okay, and he is going for the best option, too. Going for the north. Making sure to, to scout that out. Scouting the center as well. Checking that. Not scouting the southeast, though, in his natural expansion. These Teth Searchers could be doing that once he gets the chrono energy to do so. And a Macrofab being built up as well. Ah. Zion Beer is going to be able to see what's going on with the Marine. Both players competing for this particular spot in the map, but the Marine is going to go down. Oh no, it's not! The Marine just barely lives! Killing itself against the resource processor, however. So, the Marine lives to commit suicide by splash damage. And this... Well, this is it. Shalka has his RPs getting completely torn to shreds. His expansion to the north will be scouted out soon enough. His expansion to the southeast finally getting scouted out. The Zion Pulsar going around the right track to find it. And... That's about it. There's this Marine holding itself, being held back so it doesn't kill itself accidentally this time. And Ted Search is moving out as well to help scout out. But once he finds this north base, it's done. This is it. So Shalko losing his north base. Shalko will be losing his south base in a moment. This Macrofab is his only asset with Martanks, but even then, there's too many areas to come up that'll those get rid of it. Even Twin Mars. Like, even a single Twin Mar will not be enough at this stage in the game to be a threat. It would not be a credible threat. Checking this North Expansion as well, not a bad idea. Jericoon should be checking this. He doesn't know if there's anything there. There isn't, by the way. There really isn't any way for Cecil to get anything there at this point in the game. But he might have gone for carriers. Would have been really odd. I wouldn't have the money for it. Still, worth just out of prudence to check. And Shalka... As two Mar tanks come up, the Twin Mar will be able to hold off this Zion Pulsar attack to the south. Actually, the Mar alone should be able to hold it off. But even with that, this is this is game. As you can see, Shalk has lost his last RPs. His only Marine is over on the north side of his base. Not sure if he's even remembering that it's there. And the Macrofab is... Well, it's got the two Mars. Probably will be a Twin Mar soon enough. Nope, never mind, just going for a straight-up attack. And uh, this is still not enough. I mean, it'll get rid of the Zion Pulsar, of course. And the Zion Beer. But it won't be able to get rid of much else. So the Martanks... Moving forward to try to deal with this. And here we go! Finally! j Raccoon builds up Shin Turchers. And jump, jump back to j Raccoon's position, it's about a half minute down from here. Where he's finally building up Shin Turchers, and look at this armory. He's Actually going down faster than it looked like before. But yeah, the Martanks will be able to fend off the Zion Pulsar in time. Still, Shin Turchers being built up, finally. Which means... I'm not using the Shin Beer, by the way. But that means the Martanks are useless. There is nothing they can do. North base is gone. Jericoon just on cleanup duty, and Shalka not leaving yet. Not sure if he's aware that he has completely lost, but... Teth Turchers is doing enough on their own, without even getting to the Shin Turchers. And Shalka, about 15 seconds down from here... He's not merging the Mar tanks, so Twin Mars have an anti-air attack, but he's not making use of that. Trying to do what he can to get rid of the economy, but these twin these Teth Searchers are gonna kill the Mar tanks before anything meaningful happens. And the Marine over in the north has been destroyed as well. Just got killed by J Raccoon. And J Raccoon will be able to spot out this pretty shortly. Well he had a path that would spot it out, but he seems to be bypassing it. However, that importer alone will not be enough. And Shin Church is coming in to finish off the Mar tanks. Just need to get rid of this Macrofab, and that will be it. A frigate being built up. Once that frigate's up, won't mean much. Shalka has lost the game. Just realizing now that he's lost the game, apparently. And at this point, Vekir... Vekir looked kind of nice right about now. And Shalka has surrendered. Jericoon, nicely done. And that is the game. So, we see that GRC is in the semifinal, oh, not semifinal, sorry, the quarterfinals for, well, the second last round of the loser's bracket. So the winner of Faraday versus Vermind will be facing him, and that will be for tomorrow's game.
Because that is all for today. Hope you enjoyed that, and I'll be back tomorrow with probably the last few matches between Kron Abert and the winner between Ferreter Vermine, J Raccoon, and Rock Mox for the absolute finals and the winner of the tournament completely. So I'll see you then, but for now, have a good night everybody. <laughs>